Hi, I'm Joe. I'm back. Um, okay, I, I've spent the past few weeks uh, playing around with a Boss ME80 pedal, multi effects pedal for guitar. Um, I mean, basically, we use it for utilities as well. Okay, um, uh, and and I've been looking at, at this pedal for a while, and I'm also looking at the NUX, uh, or rather the new X, not sorry, not NUX, new X, the new X 200, MG 200. Okay, um, I think that there is actually can't really compare both products because the Boss ME80 falls under what they call floor pedal boards, okay, which means that um, they are mobile in the sense that you can pack it up and put in your car and you can drive to wherever you want to go, okay, or uh, you can bring it along with you, okay, if you have a car, but if you're going to carry it by hand, it is. It is still heavy, okay. Not more as heavy as a as a HDX five hundred from Line Six, okay. That's even heavier. That's like that's I think like maybe at least like four four point seven kilos, four point something, almost five kilos, okay. So comparatively, the ME eighty is lighter, but still not that mobile, okay. Um, it's about three point six kilos, and three point six kilos is still somewhat, uh, heavy and it's bulky. Okay, so while it fits nicely in your car, if you're driving around, no problem. But if you're going to bring it around with you, and you can't fit it in your bag, you have to carry it in your hand. Okay, so the, the weight constraint and the size of the pedal board is already a serious issue that I have with it. Because as a ukulele player, we are always mobile, walking about. Okay, even if, you're, even if you drive, you're going to park your car somewhere and you have to roam about with your friends, right? And you can't possibly be... Be uh, lugging both your 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 portable amplifier. In this case, most of us will be using a uh, really good amplifiers. Maybe a maybe a Roland Cube or at least or maybe a THR Yamaha THR, which is even better. THR five or THR ten. You can't possibly be roaming around carrying a portable amplifier and lugging around an ME80 at the same time. Plus your uke as well and all the cables and everything is ridiculous. Okay, so I I don't think the ME80 is exactly something that I'm looking for lah. You know. Um, well, I don't deny the ME80 has a lot of good effects in it, okay? In fact, if you look at the ME80, okay, um, I'm going to try to hold up one actually, it's kind of heavy. Okay, so you can see that this is ME80, okay, and there's a lot of little foot pedals here and there. And if you notice that each of this, right, you see, you see that there are like knobs which are inside which are inside this, like a, they have a they have a little printing um, that surrounds the knobs, right? You can see that each of them, okay, are so so called segmented into its own category, right? Its own those space, and and you, and you can see that they have preem, which is basically uh, m, m simulator, or m simulation or m simulator, and then there, there's a, maybe like a, like a like a, a EFX pedal, and there's a there's a OD and DS, which is an overdrive and DS. Uh, which is basically uh, similar to what you get when you buy individual boss pedals uh, for overdrive or for uh, distortion, okay? And uh, and then there's mod. This is a mod pedal, which is actually basically a modulation pedal. And there's a delay pedal as well, and even a um, there's, there's even a pedal pedal effects where you can assign different functions to the foot pedal, which is great, okay? Um, I mean, you can see how big this, this board is, okay. Um, well, the effects are, are really, really good for, for studio, okay, or even at home if you're using it. If you plan to use it in the studio or use it at home, it's, it's very good. The effects they have is really world-class, high-quality kind of effects. But the thing is that I don't like one thing about the way they do the effects. It's because what Boss is doing is that they are not merging the multiple pedals into one single unit, okay? What they are doing is that, just now you see how each knobs are actually classified into different categories, right? Each of them actually represent one, one, uh, one or two boss pedals together, okay? And what's really happening is that you can actually see that there are repeats, okay? There are repeats in the effects. So, for example, okay, um, so for, for example, over in the in EQ FX2 uh, side, I have things like phrase, sorry, phaser, I have tremolo and I have a delay and chorus, 
okay? But when you look at the modulation part, I also have chorus, I have tremolo, I have phaser as well. And if you look at the, at the delay pedal, the delay pedal side of it, I, I actually have a delay here and I have a delay here. So there's like a double delay, and there's a double chorus, and a, there's a double phaser, and double tremolo, and things like that. Okay? Now, um, now I don't claim to be an expert on the ME80, but here's my take on it, okay? Uh, what I feel is that Boss did not merge the whole thing into a single proper unit. But what they did was they take multiple units, and they kind of like just fuse them together. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? That means... They include everything, yes, but they don't really redesign to, to, to kind of like uh, fuse the whole thing together. They're just like taking, kind of like, 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 a, like doing patchwork, like, 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 like mishmash. They're just putting a mishmash of pedals, uh, multiple pedals together and, okay, that's it, you have your board. Okay? And, and this is a very uh, serious problem. To me, at least, this is a very serious problem. Aside from the issue about the board is not... It's not portable. Okay, it is. It's mobile. Yes, they say it's mobile. That's why if you look at the Yamaha website, sorry, at the uh, the uh, Boss website, they do say that the M E A T is a mobile pedal board, but it is not portable. There's a difference between being mobile and portable. Okay, mobile means you can bring it to different locations. Okay, it's not tied by by a power supply. It's battery powered. That's that's mean by mobile. Portable means that it's light enough to be carried in your hand. This board is definitely not light enough to be carried in your hand. Okay. You can carry it for a short distance. If you're going to walk like two kilometers with this board, forget it. It's not going to work. Okay? You're just going to feel tired carrying the board. It's, it's cumbersome. It's big. Okay, um, and you have to understand one thing about about this is that they mishmash all the pedals together, so you actually get an overlaid kind of uh, effects. Okay, you can see that two two sections of it have the same chorus and same phaser and same tremolo, and even conflict in the in the delay. There's there's delay on. I mean that there's delay on the EQ pedal, there's also delay on the on the delay pedal itself. So why? Why? Why is this happening? Why are they putting double effects? And 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 I've actually tested it. Um I've tested turning on both chorus at the same time. And it, it's just it doesn't work out. Okay. The two chorus actually conflicts. You can hear. There's a lot of problems when you have two courses going on at the same time. Okay, if you turn on only one course, it's fine. But when you have two courses on at the same time, it just doesn't work. So the only way I can get around this is I turn on the actual modulation pedal that has chorus and I switch the EFX2 pedal uh, from chorus, I switch it over to an EQ. Because EQ doesn't, doesn't conflict with, with, um, with, with my chorus or my uh, phaser or things like that, or my tremolo. Okay? So this is something which I don't like about the design of the M80, which I really don't like. Um, I don't like the, con the concept that they have they, they are just putting multiple effects together, but they are not really merging them together. You know what I mean? It's each effect exists by itself. And you have to think. You really have to think when, you, when you're going to turn on a particular effect. You have to, you have to think, will it conflict with the other one, that you, that the other effect which you're going to set? Okay? You have to think that way. Um, something which I don't really like. Right? No. Even though it's easy to set, I agree. The ME80 is probably one of the um, one of the fastest things that you can plug in your guitar and you can... You can you can kind of like uh, put everything together and you get a tone that you want and you can start jamming with it. It's uh, the ease of use is probably very unparalleled, and the quality of the effects are really quite difficult to match if you compare to other brands. Okay, uh, even analog pedals as well. Uh, apart from the very high end analog pedals, uh, the low end analog pedals they have nothing that can match the M E T. The M E T quality effects are super good. Okay, it's something that you can really put in the studio and use it for studio recording and things like that. But you can't use it. Um, doesn't really apply to me because I, I do live jamming and things like that. I do not want to lock that thing around with me. You know, I, I for me the the the, the new X, uh, MG two hundred is better for me because, uh, comparatively the MG two hundred only requires like I think four batteries, four batteries, uh, four batteries and uh, it weighs like only zero point nine kilos, which is nine hundred grams, less than a kilo. So it's really light for me. I can end so small. The, the, the pedal is, is only about you know, about this size. Um, I can actually put it into my into the front the front big pocket of, of our UPD bag and carry it with me wherever I want. Um, so definitely Nux two hundred is for me. Uh, again, again, I, I wouldn't. I don't really like to compare the Nux two hundred and the ME eighty because they fall under a different category. The ME eighty is basically what I call a floor pedal board. 
okay mobile yes not portable that's for sure okay so the mg the new x mg 200 is not a pedal board it's actually it really is a unit it's, it's a portable effects unit you see it's a, it's a portable effects uh multi effects unit so it's not exactly a, a pedal board you see so it's lightweight it's, it really is lightweight okay um uh, some parts of it is made of plastic, okay, uh, but it's, it's kind of strong ABS plastic, so it doesn't doesn't crack that easily. Uh, very, very tough, okay, very tough. It's a very tough thing, and it works, you know. A little bit light, but still okay, it works fine. Okay, um, so anyway, back to the back to the ME80. Uh, I have a problem with the, the portability, because it doesn't have portability for me, so I, I, don't, I don't think this pedal is good for me. Um, second thing which I don't like is I don't like the repeat of the effects. I don't like having... I don't like having chorus here and one more chorus here. It's like, why you give me two chorus? I just need only one chorus. That's all I want, right? <laughs> I just want one chorus only. I only need one one chorus. I only need one phaser. I only need one tremolo. I don't want to have the same effects repeating between two sides. It doesn't make sense to me. And when I apply both, the whole thing, the whole effect totally messes up. Okay? Um, I don't, likewise, I don't need to have two delays. All I need is just one delay. Okay, so it's, it's really silly, which means that they, they, they didn't properly... Uh, kind of like um, melt the whole thing to to get together as a single as a single unit, but rather they are still they are they are still disparate pieces which are being put together. You see, um, this this is something I don't like about M E T lah. You know? uh, one more thing I don't like about M E T is that it it actually has a very small display. I I'm not sure what kind of display is that. I think it's a, it's an L C D display. A uh, very small L C D display that has numbers red red color numbers. Uh, just showing you like number one, number two, number three, I think number ninety nine. Uh, the problem with this is that it's not very, not exactly very intuitive because it's just numbers only. I mean, if you look at the Nux, I mean the Nux two hundred, right? Or maybe the Nux twenty. The Nux twenty is more comparable because the Nux twenty falls in the category of the of the Yamaha uh, ME eighty. It is also it's also a four pedal pedal board. And uh, the Yamaha M80 weighs three point six kilos. The Nux MG20 uh, weighs like uh, three point one kilos, which is just a little bit lighter than the Yam Yamaha. Uh, uh, sorry, a little bit light lighter than the you know, the Boss pedal, the, the Boss uh, Boss uh, what do you call it? Uh, floor pedal, okay, floorboard pedal. So the the the, the new X MG20 actually has almost everything that the that the M E A T has, okay, including a a, a programmable a pro programmable pedal, okay, that you can use, okay. Um it has everything, it's lighter weight and the nice thing about the, the about the M G twenty is that it has a it has it has a pretty big screen display, a, a TFT display, uh which is basically full color, it's a full color display. So you can actually see at the bottom of the screen when you turn it on, they they light up. They call it a chain, okay? The, the, there's actually an effects chain, so you can actually have your maybe your 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 Y effects pedal. You can have a little bit of um. You can you can so you can have your M simulator first, so you can have your M simulator on the left, and then after the next one down the line will be maybe a, maybe either your Y pedal or your next one will be maybe your O drive pedal. So you can see it, it's linked together. It's linked as a chain, you see, and as and when you can switch to any part of the chain and and go into it and adjust the effects from there. Or you can just turn off that, that, that pedal within the chain itself. Uh, and, and and virtually virtually within the virtual circuit itself, it's actually bypassing the chain. You see? It's actually a virtual chain. Instead of having analog pedals in a row, it's actually a virtual analog chain. Or it's a virtual... Yeah, it's, it's a virtual... It's a digitized virtual analog chain, whatever you call it. Lah, okay? Because the whole thing happens, the whole magic happens within the... The, the system itself, the, the unit itself, it's, it's all it's all like software, you know? it's all programmed into it, so it's, it's amazing. Um, and 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 the thing is that the and the the, the ME eighty without that without a TFT display, and without that that kind of uh, uh, um, the more advanced high tech way of interacting with the U, with the effects pedal, uh, and because of that, they repeat the effects. It doesn't make sense, okay? So it still loses out to the MG20. The MG20 is still a way better floorboard pedal than, 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 than the... Uh, comparatively, I would say that uh, even if they have a, a couple of um, 
effects less. Like for example, like maybe um, the M80 has like 72 different effects. Uh, for the MG20, I think it's like maybe they only have like maybe 66 effects or something like that. They, 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 they lose out by a few effects, but it doesn't matter because the main effects are still there. It's good enough, okay? Uh, they may lose out in terms of effects, but they have a lot of more powerful features and better uh, better kind of concept. It's a lighter weight. Um, it, it can also be powered by batteries. Uh, and so it's actually mobile. Okay, again, I won't say it's portable, but it's still, it's still 3.1 kilos. It's not that, it's not light. Um, but it's still mobile and it has, it has, it has, a, it has a expression pedals. Okay, it, it actually has an expression pedal that you can use. You can program it. Um, the amazing thing is that there is a display that you can go into the chain and change whatever, whatever effects you want. Um, just like that, and you can, then you can have a. I mean, there are so many user presets inside. I think I can't remember how many there are, but it's almost on par with the ME80 as well. So in fact, I think the MG MG20 is like 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 it's like pound for pound. It is a, it is actually a direct, uh, competitor against the the ME80. Okay, and and it has better it has, because of the TFT screen. It has all the controls on the screen. It's like it's a virtual con. It's a virtual kind of control that you can actually, uh, tweak. You see, either by by pressing buttons or you can knobs and things like that you can actually tweak it um, and and what the mg20 has uh, or rather is uh, the mg20 actually has has a uh, has this uh this, this thing called tasc okay same with the same with the mg200 the mg200 is like a portable version of the portable version of the mg20 okay uh, they have something called the tsac which is the true simulation of analog circuit so what happens is that when you turn on the distortion pedal or the overdrive pedal on the Boss ME80, you will notice that no doubt the sound is very tight and the sound is very nice. Okay, you can hear yeah, wow, very great, great, great sound and tone. But there's something about it that you can somehow hear, especially with the overdrive. You can hear that hmm, well, it's it sounds a bit uh, a bit too processed, you know, it's too processed, it's too digitized. It doesn't sound natural. Okay. Whereas for the MG20, because of the TSAC technology, they are able to simulate and make the effects inside sound as if they are really analog pedals, which is nice, really nice. Okay, of course, of, of course, I don't doubt the M ME80 in terms of real flexibility because uh, what I just mentioned about is basically just the knobs only on the ME80. I have not mentioned about the software portion yet, where you can actually install the, the, the editors and you can actually connect USB to to a computer to a MacBook or something, and you can actually further tweak the effects of the M80 using USB. So the, the M80 is an extremely advanced uh, pedal board in itself. Uh, but not something that I can bring about or carry with me. So it's pointless to me, you see. Um, yeah, I mean just too bad lah, you know, even though it's a great board, but it's just not not portable. It's mobile, it's not portable, okay? Yeah, it's mobile. It's, it's like having a mobile power generator. Okay, uh, uh, the, 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 the mobile Power generator can can weigh like you no, know, uh, maybe like half a ton, right? So yeah, it's mobile. You can bring it about with you. you can load it up in your lorry and drive it somewhere, but it's not portable. You cannot hold it in one hand and, and walk about with it. You see, it's it's just too heavy to walk about with. Does it make sense? So I, I think I will still go with the with the with the new X the M uh, the new X twenty MG twenty, sorry M MG two hundred, which is actually a, a lot more portable. Uh, downside to it is that of course there's no expression pedal lah, but it's okay with me because I don't really use expression pedal. Even if I use a wah, I'll probably just stick with the with the auto wah, which is okay for me. You see, and 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 because of the TFT screen, I'm able to go in there and tweak all the very tiny little settings that they have inside, uh, which is amazing. It's fantastic. Okay, and uh, and the, and the nice thing about the 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 MG20, whether it's a pedal board or whether it's the portable version, which is the MG200. Uh, the nice thing about it is that uh, there's no repeat of effects. If you look at it, there's a chain, okay, the, the pedal chain, there is no repeated effects. They won't give you a pedal that has chorus on this pedal and give you a second pedal that has chorus there as well. Okay, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, you're paying this amount of money and you're giving me two of the same effects. What for? What the hell for? Right? It doesn't make sense. So this is something that M80 has this very, I I I see it as a very severe problem because I don't like having conflicting pedals. It only shows me that the product is not really fully properly designed to be used together. You see, it, 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 they're, they're still kind of like they're still kind of like disparate pedals one by one. 
So you, you see the same effects on this pedal and you see the same effects on that pedal. The same effects are here and the same effects here as well. I was like, ah, you know, why why are you doing this? You see, why? It's so weird, right? <laughs> uh so the thing the thing is that, you know, yeah, that's that's the problem with the M E A T la, you know, which, that's my opinion on, on it, you see. Now, now I'm I'm well aware that M E A T is used by a lot of very famous people, uh, guitarists included, la, you know, people like uh, Marty Friedman and all that. And uh, of course among the ukulele players as well, I think uh Jake Jake Shinabuko used it at one time. Uh Kale Gamio used it used it as well. Okay. But I think they have seen moved I, I think they have since moved on from, from, from the M E A T. So uh I mean don't I mean I will say that you no know, don't don't overhype the M E A T. Honestly, don't overhype it, okay? Uh it is a pedal that is it is that is in my opinion is a pedal that is still somewhat stuck in the past. It doesn't really uh, it's not like new modern pedals today where you have TFT display, full color displays, and you can actually have a virtual virtual chain pedal, you know, virtual virtual pedal chain, where you can go in each one and you can modify each pedal via the screen. You see, which is amazing. The the flexibility is so powerful. Uh, the M E A T doesn't do that. You see, it's so it's kind of like lagging behind in terms of technology. How 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 high tech the technology is. It's still lagging behind, despite despite it being a very powerful board, it's still lagging behind. And uh, and uh, one one of, one of the things which I don't really like is that, uh, I think what happened was I actually checked out the Yamaha. Sorry, uh, I checked. I keep saying Yamaha, <laughs> the boss. I was checking out the boss website for the M E A T, and they say that the the looper is a thirty eight second looper, which um plus minus is about forty seconds looper lah. Okay, it's a, it is a thirty eight second looper. Okay, uh, the 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 new X M G two hundred. Actually has a sixty scan looper, the new X MG twenty, which is a pedal board in the same class as the M E eighty, the Boss M E eighty. Um, the 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 the, the new X MG twenty has like, I think about like a, has somewhere around I think like hundred and twenty seconds looper, which is wow, <laughs> that's a lot. That's like one 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 minute plus. You know, it's like it has hundred twenty seconds looper, which is like I mean I'm sorry, it's like two minutes. It's just like two full minutes of looping. And uh and, and all the new X pedals, all the new X multi effects pedals, uh except the very entry level ones, like uh, the, the really small portable ones, like the PG two and the or the uh PA two, those are the very small portable types, super light and portable. Apart from those, those are very entry level ones. All the rest of the uh MG series pedals, they all have uh loopers which have a longer longer time, okay? Uh, including the MG hundred, even the MG hundred was actually the first multi effects pedal that they created, uh, and and is uh, and is, it, I mean yeah, it, it has an expression pedal as well, and and the the looper is quite long. The looper I think comes with maybe I think at least sixty or 70, 70 seconds to count looper, and uh and they come with looper and they come with drum pedal, you know? looper and drum pedal, which is, uh they have a longer looper and they have a, and they have drum pedal, okay, uh. And this is something that the main thing is that you know while the M E A T has looper, the M E A T does not have a drum pedal. Uh, sorry, not not drum pedal, uh, drum effects. Sorry, sorry, drum, uh, drum effects. Uh, I'm kind of sleepy right now. <laughs> okay, so uh, the M E A T doesn't have doesn't have drum loops. It doesn't have. It's not a drum machine. It doesn't have drum drum loops. The 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 M G series, the new X M G series, all have all have uh, built in uh, at least forty drum loops in, inside the system. Okay. So if you can watch the demo for the MG twenty or the MG two hundred, you will notice that they, they actually they are able to hear the the drum going doom doom ta doom doom ta ta doom doom ta ta. Can you hear that going on in the background? They can actually play the, the, the they can even adjust the drum loops uh, from the TFT display, which in my opinion gives it this alone totally out totally outclasses the M E A T. The M E A T is like a it's, it's like a dinosaur you know? it's like it's like a old technology that's still stuck. Maybe a couple of years ago, when they don't have such things as, as a TFT uh, display that you can modify and work with it, you see. Uh, unfortunately, for 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 Boss multi effects pedals, is that they don't, uh, they have not really, they have not really like um, from the time of the ME eighty, they did not really focus too much on creating very portable uh, pedal boards. Okay. Or rather, they, they they don't they don't they don't have what I call a portable pedal. They have a mo they have mobile pedal boards, but they don't really have a real portable multi effects pedal. Okay, Boss doesn't have anything like that. 
The closest one I saw was the GT001, but uh, I think it's quite expensive. Okay, the GT001 was quite impressive because when I look at the, the size of it, uh, it's smaller than the M80 and it's a lot lighter. It's only, I think, about 1.3 kilos, which is okay, no problem. You see, it's quite light. Yeah. Okay, so the GT001 is quite a solid solid thing that I, I saw. The Boss, the Boss GT001 is good. But it's a little bit pricey and there's a bit of a learning curve because this one can do a lot more advanced stuff. You can actually uh, connect it to an external uh, to a computer and you can do you can actually put everything, everything through an editor and change your pictures and all that. So it's, it's a lot more advanced. Okay, I, I, I don't have enough time to talk about every single thing of all panels because it's too complex. But I'm just giving you an example. Lah, you know? okay? And uh, I think that the, the real competitor that's upcoming that I saw, I think it's roughly about also roughly about, about the same weight as a GT001 uh, somewhere around I think 1.1 or 1.2 kilos uh, a little bit yeah I think it's around, I think it's around 1.2 1.3 it's around the same as the GT001 I think it's actually the uh, which is actually the, the, the boss uh, GT1 uh, that, that's the upcoming one that, that's a good one because they actually shrunk down the ME80 instead of having the size of the ME80 okay they were they were smart enough to, to to take away uh, most of the metal parts and they replace it with uh, more like ABS. I think I think it does have certain plastic or maybe aluminium. But I think it's aluminium. They replace it with alum light alum aluminium parts, and they scaled down the handle uh, to become like 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 a desktop model. You see, of course you can still put it on the floor. You can still use the toes to, to press step. There's there's no more uh, no more like a uh, like little foot pedals for you to step. Okay, to stomp. Okay, uh, but they have like quite like squarish buttons which are big enough and strong enough for you to use your toes or your or tip of your toe to, to step it just to gently step it and turn on the defects so I think that the GT01 is quite a, something that is uh, worth looking into uh, those of you who bought the the ME80 um, I mean even though I know it's about 299 now US right I think it's quite cheap but uh, to be honest you know, um, no no man no no not for me definitely not for me okay um, simply because of portability issues, it's not portable. Okay, um, if you really want something that has real portability, uh, really small, you can put it into your in your gig bag. I'll still go with the with the new X. Okay, you want something that sounds more analog because of TSAC technology, go with new X. New X is still better, superior actually. Okay, um, <coughs> if you miss the boss pedals, okay, especially the the old days, they have they have. A, they have the single boss pedals. If you miss those pedals, and they are, and those pedals are great by the way. I'm not saying they're bad. They're good pedals, okay. If you miss those kind of pedals, but you don't want to spend all the money buying individual pedals, go for the Boss GT One. The GT One is a nice one, a really good one. I'm not sure how much is the price now because I think they launched only last year or something, so it's still quite expensive. But hopefully the price may drop. I think the Boss GT One is, is 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 a good mix. It's not small enough to put into into your gig bag. Uh, I mean, size-wise, it still loses to, to new X lah. Okay, new X still has the smallest portable pedal, uh, the smallest possible um, uh, pedal in the world. That has they so full feature. It's like a studio inside your pocket. You know? that, 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 that's how they, they put it lah. You know? it's like having a, a little mini studio with you wherever you go. So the the GT one is still not there as not there yet in terms of size. They haven't managed to shrunk the GT one, or rather, they have not shrunk the ME eighty to that kind of size yet lah. You know. Uh, because the GT1 came out later than the ME80, so you can say that actually everything started from the ME80. Because the ME80 was the very hugely successful uh, pedal board back then. Um, the GT1 did shrink the ME80 by a lot and really changed the dimension. They made it thinner and lighter and uh, more accessible and, and, and lighter. Yeah, you go carry it and bring it wherever you want to go. Uh, but still, it's not as small as the new X uh, portable pedals yet. Okay, uh, the GT1 is still a floor still a floorboard pedal, okay? Uh, but at least, at least it's not that heavy. You can actually just put it under your arm and carry one arm. You could you could walk like two kilometers with a GT1 and you won't feel tired. That's a good thing about the, the Boss GT1. Because the, they managed to really scale the weight down to like, I think 1.2 kilos only. 1.2 or I think, I think it's 1.2. It's even lighter than the, the GT001. Okay, I was looking at the specs just now. Okay, so the, the and I saw the demo for the GT1. It's, 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 it's amazing, it's really amazing. Um, not only do they have everything that ME80 has, they even have new new effects. Okay, I think it's something like 108 effects on the spot. Compare this to the ME80, it's only 72. Uh, the ME80 only has 72 effects. 
okay, the GT, the GT1 has something like 108 effects, man. And the, and the user presets is like, oh, I think like 100, 100 slots or something like that. You can just, 100 banks, uh, no, you can actually just program in whatever you want, set whatever you want. Uh, it comes with a, with a looper. And the GT1 actually has that screen. Uh -huh. they, they learned their lesson, okay? Boss learned their lesson. They know that they were losing to, to other competitive upcoming brands like New X. Because New X has the TFTP, sorry, the TFT screen, uh, which, which uh, Boss doesn't have. Boss was losing on this point. That's why when they released the GT001 and the GT1, they immediately put in that TFT screen, you see? And everything now is controlled by the screen. They can So when they put in that screen and they use software to control, okay, so to speak, uh, software, they can reuse they can actually reduce the number of little foot pedals or switches that you need to have, and they can re reduce the number of knobs. So for example, they can have three knobs that can control multiple things. From the same screen, you see, so it, it, it still makes a lot more sense. So the GT One is still an advanced product, more advanced than the M80. The M80 is a dinosaur. Okay, uh, those of you who are going to buy it, please, um, I'll advise you. I mean, though I'm not an expert lah, but this is my opinion. I will, I will tell you, I will advise you that unless you're going to put it in the studio or at home, it's fine. If you're going to bring it about, forget it. Okay, it is heavy. It really is heavy. Okay, it's still heavy. Even if it's lighter than HDX five hundred, it's still heavy. Okay, so uh, either go for the either go for the GT one or the GT zero zero one. Okay, or if you want it even smaller and more compact, okay, really portable, go for the MG two hundred. Okay, if you like something that has that analog feel and analog sound to it, MG two hundred. Okay, MG two hundred wins on every single thing. Okay. Um, even though it's even though it's it is a pedalless board, it doesn't. Have, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a pedalless pedal. It doesn't have it doesn't have a expression pedal. Okay, but uh, it's okay. It's fine because we also don't really use it, right? It has all the main effects that we need, and uh, everything is controlled from the screen. Okay, uh, price wise, the the new X, uh, two hundred is, is cheap. It's really cheap. Okay, if you if you go online, you can actually you know, get it for, I think maybe about hundred, on the low low end of hundred lah. You know? It's not that expensive, it's, it's low. And it's, and it's about 100 plus only, about sing dollars, 100 plus. It's cheap, it's very cheap. Okay, uh, for something of this size, you know, the price is amazing. They squeeze so much into one tiny little package. Something something which the ME80 just can't do, okay. So, so those of you who are Boss fans, you really like the Boss kind of sound. You like processed kind of sound, okay. I'm not saying it's wrong, because I like analog sound. Some people like processed sound. If you are more a fan of a processed kind of sound, then go for the Boss GT, the GT1. Okay, if you're not a fan of the processed sound and you want something that sounds warmer and more natural in terms of, um, you know, sounding sounding more analog, right? Then go for the new X MG200. Okay. Uh, and 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 one thing you have to understand that the the MG2 the MG200 is not built for for studio. If you're going to do any recording work, uh, you, you can use it, not say you can't, but it's not really meant for that kind of thing, okay? It performs well in a real setting. It doesn't, in, in life, like live jam, you know, uh, on stage kind of thing, uh, to an open air, to a crowd, at a pub, whatever, the MG200 really, the MG200 really performs well in this kind of scenario, okay? It, it may not really perform well in a studio, lah, okay? Uh... The ME80 does perform well in the studio, but it doesn't perform. I mean, I, I wouldn't use it like, for live gigs. Like, you know? It just sounds too processed. The sound is too stiff to me, which I, I have a problem with. Only thing that I think that's great is probably the wah pedal. The, the, the effect. The wah effect, again, Boss makes one of the best wah pedals that, that I've heard. Like, you know? um, but again, it's subjective because even though the wah is very tight sounding and everything, it sounds very perfect. But you can hear it's still processed. It? it doesn't sound that kind of natural. Uh, in analog kind of while you can actually hear there's a certain kind of a brilliance, they call it brilliance, there's a certain kind of brilliance to the, the tone. So analog wires you can actually hear that, that that certain kind of brightness, certain kind of brilliance in the wah sound, you see. Yeah, so so I still think that new X wins on that area. They win because of the TASC, they win because of, of the, the, the TF TFT display, okay, and the way they have the chain that's layout, which is amazing. Okay, and they win because of the size. They manage to break scale it down to a tiny, like a like, like a tiny uh, sandwich lunch lunch box. 
kind of size, you know, you know a lunch box sandwich kind of a box kind of size, which is uh, incredible, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they have loopers, I mean they have a looper inside and they have uh, they have they have drum loops inside which is 40 drum loops that you can actually adjust every single drum loop, what what kind of beat you want, you know, that kind of thing. Uh you want extra hi-hats or things like that, you can just put it in, you can program it yourself. It's, it's amazing, you know. Without having to use a computer, okay? Without having to use a computer. The M E A T sadly it lacks the drum loops la, and this is something which I, which I don't like, you see. It lacks the drum loops. I cannot uh, I, I I cannot do much from it. And if I want to really adjust the sound further, I have to go through a computer. I have to use USB. Whereas for the new X, the MG two hundred, I don't need to. Everything can be done within a TFT screen, you see. So I guess boss learned their lesson and, and when they came out with the GT the, the GT1, the, the boss GT1, they actually did that, you see, they actually followed what New X was doing, you see. So I think I think that if you're gonna look for for a, a, a more portable floorboard kind of pedal, or rather a pedal pedal board, I think go for maybe just go for the GT1, you know. Uh if you if you like that kind of sound. But for me it doesn't work for me because I, I need the analog sound, you see. So I, I, I've heard so many, I, I've heard more or more, whatever you call it, the brand. Uh, I don't, more is okay, but I don't really like the controls. The, the knob controls is on the side, it's the same thing like that, which I don't really like it. Lah. Okay, they have the gem, they have the gem 1, gem 2, uh, multi effects pedal also, which I don't really fancy. Uh, the design, the layout, the interface, control, in, the control interface is, isn't very nice. Okay, and I find, I find that among all the portable, let's not talk about floorboards but portable pedals that I can put into my ukulele gig bag and bring along with me anywhere I go. Um, I still think that the new X MG200 still it still wins. They, they have no competitors at the moment. They have no absolutely no competitors. Okay. Only the Boss GT1 comes close to it. But even then the Boss GT1 is still an entire pedal board. You see, it, it is still the size is still big. It still has that, that, that kind of size which is meant to be uh, really meant as a, as a pedal board to be put on the floor. A floor type of pedal board. Okay, it's not really a compact unit. See that you can put inside your pocket and walk around with it. <laughs> okay. So I, I hope that I, ho I hope that this clarifies the difference between uh floor pedal boards versus portable pedal boards. Because floor pedal boards are actually mobile, not necessarily portable. Okay. But portable multi flex pedals are really portable. You can take it and put it into the front of uh, into the front pocket of your bag and just fit in nicely and just bring it anywhere you want so that is real that is true portability you see yeah so uh, yeah I think that's it lah you know <laughs> I don't really have time to, to go and turn on one by one and show you the effects but but that's basically what I, I, I understand from, from the past few days past few weeks I've been playing with it I, I begin to understand how it works lah you know and, and uh, when I compare it against the new X I still no, I'll still go with the new X now for the kind of price because I know the GT1 is not cheap. The GT1 I think retails I think at least like maybe four hundred plus at the moment, somewhere around some somewhere somewhere in the four hundred range, maybe five hundred range. I'm not sure, but I know it's expensive. They retail they retail in that kind of price. So uh, I, I I think that the in terms of price and in terms of the effects and in terms of having the having a, a longer looper and having the, the drum loops, you know, it's a built-in drum machine. I still think that the new X two hundred is still the king. There's no competing brand so far. I've been looking around, you know. Um, I, I saw things like what Vilton or something. There's a brand called Vilton, which I, which looks really nice on the outside, but Vilton itself doesn't have all these things, you see. And the the, the I think the drum machine inside is kind of terrible. It, it's a very very limited set of drum machines, very limited limited set of drum loops, and you cannot adjust the drum loops, which I which I don't like, you see. Uh, so I, I find that um, <laughs> no man, I've not been able to find anything else that's better than than, than new X lah. No? But the, the main selling point to me for the new X, I still think is the TSAC la. That's that's the reason why I place order for, for the for the new X MG two hundred because the MG two hundred has the TA, TSAC. You see, I, I think if it, if it's not for the price, if it's not for the price and for the TSAC technology, I will probably go and just sell up and buy a Yamaha GT one. I probably would do that. You see, yeah. But the thing is that the G the, the GT one doesn't have that kind of analog simulator. It doesn't simulate analog. Which I don't like, you see. I, I like analog kind of sound. So the GT1, I won't say it's bad or what, because there's really no right and wrong about this, but it just doesn't suit me, it doesn't suit my taste. I like I really like the analog kind of sound. So the new X MG200 does suit me a lot in terms of taste. Okay, and it really 
has a kind of size that I want, very portable, very light. You can just bring it anywhere you want. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's 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 it about the video and uh thank you for watching.